And of course, you may as well, well you may as well put in Jorge Posada in there from the Yankees in the um, the late nineties, like with the the Jeters and um, you know all, all the all those guys and everything else. So you know, I have well, that's sort of that's sort of what they're recreating. You mm-hmm. know, you had Jeter and Mariano, and you had Pettit, and you know, you had Clemens for a while, and then you had. You Cena and you had um, Andy uh, 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 Pettit. Mm-hmm. So I mean, they had home, they had some homegrown guys and some uh, free agents. Okay, the growing the home hometown guys again. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so they're growing those guys again. Now it's can they put the rest of the pieces together? But listen, you know, Washington if they re-sign Harper, oh my God, there again they're going to be right there. I mean, Strasburg is still in his prime. You know, Scherzer is still there. They got a great closer. They got other pieces. You know, Zimmerman's great. There's other teams that are, you know, really good. The Dodgers, who knows? Mm-hmm. You know, they, they did a whole overhaul and all this, and they're going after Machado, and now the White Sox want Machado. And the Dodgers, they're going to be in it. They got a lot of young talent, and they got, de- they got, you know, I say decent pitching. You know, you got Kershaw, and then like one other guy, and then everybody else, you know. And, and of course, if Washington had all their guys that are healthy, they could easily win some National National League uh, East Division titles, make a run for the pennant. But the problem is either Harper or Strasburg or somebody from Washington always gets hurt significantly and derails Washington for quite a while. That's been the big problem of the Nationals. That is sports. That is sports. You can have a powerhouse team, and the minute somebody goes down, who fills in for him and what do they do? Mm-hmm. You know, your great teams, somehow, some way, they stay healthy. You know, or they have something happen at the beginning of the season. So the guy is ready to go 100% by the all-star break, and then it's on. Mm-hmm. That is sports in every single sport there is. Basketball, you know, LeBron James, forget the Lakers. They'll go, you know, to Cleveland. If he goes down, that's all over. If he goes down with the Lakers, it's all over. You know, uh, uh, now, you know, Golden State has built a different team. They built a dynasty. They got three guys that if somebody goes down, the other two guys will pick up the slack, you know, uh, between Durant, Curry, and, and Clay Thompson. And if somebody goes down, Iguodala picks it up. Or, you know, somebody else picks it up. They built a dynasty-type team. You know, and, it, and they're just, they're unstoppable. I, I, I stopped watching basketball probably 10 years ago when Shaquille was gone and some of the other guys and, you know, I just lost interest and it just wasn't the same game. Mm-hmm. And my goodness, man, I absolutely love watching Golden State. They, they've made me a Golden State fan. And I'm not, you know, jumping on the bandwagon, none of that. I just say they're an incredible team to watch. Steph Curry may be the greatest shooter ever in the history of the NBA and we're watching him in his Prime. That is you know, a, it's that, incredible. That is amazing too. And uh, Seth Curry, you know, coming from a small school called Davidson, that made the first or second round and went fairly deep. And um, who knows if Davidson never played? Seth Curry n- would have never played, and it shows the importance of going deep into yeah. those uh, smaller schools. And also, when it comes to like you know the coach as well too, Steve Kerr. All he has to do is just press the buttons, let the machine run, and he should know he's. Uh, Help the Bulls won so um, he was, three to six uh, Steve, championships in the NBA. Steve Kerr was the right coach of the right team at the right time. He taught Steph Curry what it, what the game is about. He was the, he was one of what three of the Chicago Bulls <laughs> shooters and passers. Mm-hmm. You know that's what he did. He, you know Steve Kerr when he got to the Bulls, his job was not to score twenty points a game. That was Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen. Okay. You know, you get a couple of rebounds. He doesn't have a big rebounder, but he could pass the ball and he could shoot it lights out. Mm -hmm. He taught Steph Curry how to do it that way on a championship level. Before he got there, he had his old man. Del Curry was a hell of a shooter. He's a hell of a ball player. Mm -hmm. Just never got the accolades. He was never a monster all-star. He was never an NBA champion, I don't think. Um, But he knew how to be a professional athlete. That he taught to his kid. As far as on the court, you know, and shooting, of course, he taught the kid. But then once he got to the professional game, Steve Kerr just said, listen, this is how it's done. You know, and it's one thing if, 
if you were coached and you kind of played or you didn't or you played 50 years ago, no. Steve Kerr throws in the DVD of him in the fifth game of the championship passing the ball to Michael Jordan. That gets Steph Curry's attention immediately. Mm-hmm. There's respect, though. Respect is a big thing. And Steve Kerr is a classy guy. I've met him a couple times, has nothing but absolute class. A smile, good guy, knows how to treat players because he knows how he wanted to be treated. Mm-hmm. And especially coming so again, from... Everything is situation. And especially coming from the best in the Bulls organization, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, even a coach, uh, Phil Jackson as well, too, taught them all how to play the game in a very unique way, triangle offense and whatever else. Right, right time, right coach, right players. You know, listen, nobody might ever talk about Michael Jordan if he, if he goes one team more. How in the world was he the third guy drafted after a team Elijah won? How is that possible? Michael Jordan. Well, here. Oh, here's a story. Here, here's a story. I was going to tell you this when I was in Chicago. You know, growing up and starting in radio, the Bulls never pursued Michael Jordan. And guess who they pursued? No. Sam Bowie. Believe it or not, mm-hmm. Sam Bowie. Yes, it was like it was a big war for Sam Bowie. It was between the Bulls and Portland. Okay, and um, you know the Bulls wanted Sam Bowie, but Portland in a sense, why it's Sam Bowie. They already had their shooters, you know, back in the day, like with Calvin Nat, Dave Twarzyk. It's like, who needs another shooter? And and they desperately needed a center. And Portland just happened to sneak in with a second pick. They grab um, Sam Bowie, and all the Bull fans are like, oh, no, what do we do? And the Bulls and the Bulls get up and announce, Michael Jordan, North Carolina. Everybody's like, yay, like golf clap, almost like um a sarcasm, exactly. like cheer, cheer. And it was just like, you know, I didn't get the bride, but I settled for being the bridesmaid. That was like getting a silver medal. It was like a gloomy response. But as time went on, Michael Jordan started becoming like a really, really great player. And obviously, he's become what he is. And Sam Bowie, after a couple of broken legs, he's out of the league. And Portland started complaining that, oh, no, we should draft him Michael Jordan. Guys, you had Calvin Nat, Dave Twarzyk, and a slew of players. You could have Michael Jordan on a bench, and he would never have been a successful player. And you're right. Right time, right place, right everything. Sure. I mean, listen, you know, the, the, the draft with Kevin Durant. There's a guy, Greg Oden. He's the All-American. He's the center. He's the guy from Ohio State. And he looks like a monster. And so he gets drafted first. And Kevin Durant gets drafted second. Mm-hmm. And, you know, L, you know, what was he in? 18, 20 games, 30 games his rookie year. And he goes down. The leg goes, and here we go. And it was the same thing. And, you, and, and these guys are not a five-minute interview and a five-minute workout. They work these guys out for weeks, and they see them in the practices, and they see them at the tryouts, and they, they, they want them to death. And he was great. <laughs> he starts playing the Legos. There it goes. It's it. It's all over. It, oh, my God. You, can't, you cannot foresee an injury, you know. You know, I had I had a, a great conversation. This was years ago. I was actually I was at Upper Deck's offices, a trading card company, and they were going back and forth with Tops and who they were going to do the deal with, Greg Oden or Kevin Durant. Oh and, no! You know, Ninety three. And I'm sitting there in one of the guys' offices, and the owner of the company came in, and he's like, "These two guys, blah 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 blah." And I looked at him and I said, two questions: How many people buy Patrick Ewing and Akeem Olajuwon?" That was my first question to him. And then the second thing I said is, you take the guy that can jump out of the building. That's the exciting guy. That's the new type, Jordan-type guy. And he looked at me and he goes, oh, thank you. And it was like three days later, and they signed Kevin Durant to the exclusive deal. Nice. You know, I mean, I got nothing for it other than the fact that I, I, I was there for that conversation. But you take the guy that can jump out of the building because that's the guy that, that's going to learn how to shoot. If you're a center, you're 10 feet and in. That's it. That's the end of your game. You know, Elijah one had the great drop step turnaround. Okay. You had what he had. You know, the only reason why Elijah one wins the title is Clyde Drexler. No Clyde Drexler, no title. It took the guy that could jump out of the building to get there. Yes, that's right. And I remember, yeah, Cl- I remember Clyde Drexler was, very, very well. You're right. And I think he was like the second guard drafted um, after Michael Jordan, if I'm correct. Listen, Houston Rockets in the 
late seventies, early eighties. They had Moses Malone. He was secretariat. That's how I describe Moses Malone. He was one of the greatest centers ever to play ball. Couldn't win for anything. Philadelphia. They had uh, Mark Ivoroni. I remember him. And and Charles Jones. Those were their two centers. And the owner finally made the decision: we're going to go get. Moses Malone. He came up for free agency. They signed him. Bang! And they won the title. And Dr. J got his ring because they had the pieces to the puzzle. They had a great center. They had Dr. J and they had great shooters. You know, Maurice Cheeks was a great point guard. Franklin Edwards, Andrew Tony, Bobby Jones. Athletic guys who could shoot and pass the ball. But it took the guy that could jump out of the building and Dr. J, he was the cog you know, with Moses. How did we get on basketball? Oh, my God. <laughs> and as you can see, I've, ne- I've never watched a sport sporting event in my life. I've never seen a basketball game, a football game, or a baseball game. Oh, my goodness. That is something. And, of course, you know, just a couple of things before we wrap up. We know you're a busy, very busy guy. Um, just a question as well, too. Who do you think is going to win the uh, NBA title this year? Or should I say... Who's going to be in the NBA Finals from how you see it? Well, there's Golden State and everybody else. There's nobody in the East now. I, I don't see any team out of the East that can beat them. LeBron James comes over to the Lakers. The Lakers are not going to be, you know, hot playoff run. They're much too young other than LeBron. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's basically Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, and the rest of the Golden State Warriors. It's their fate. It's with what what they do. Mm-hmm. Somebody gets hurt, if somebody else comes up, okay, fine. You know, and they can all mix the pieces. But there's no team in the East that can touch Golden State at this point. Right. Now even the Boston Celtics. There's no team in the East that can touch the Golden State Warriors. They're just too good. Houston, Houston's going to make a run out it. They're going to give them a challenge. I don't see them beating Golden State in a seven-game series in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You know, Denver, Denver's playing phenomenal ball. Yes, I, I just and I just saw Denver that. Denver and Golden State, best two teams in the league. And what happened last night? Golden State turned it up a notch. They said, we need to make this game an impression game. Like, hey, guys, you know, we've been playing kind of tutti frutti It's regular season. But when we want, we can turn it up. And it was a blowout. Golden State got 51 in the first quarter. They said, okay, yeah, and, and, and what was that you were talking about? You guys have the same record as us? No, I don't think so. <laughs> and I guess we shall see yeah. as um, time goes on. Of course, uh, we just have a few minutes. We know you're very busy. And, uh, and of course, um, what will be your, consider your favorite projects, your uh, challenges in the movie industry, as well as um, in the sports uh, industry, and what do you consider your most memorable moment? Most memorable moments. Yeah, it can, it can be anything. Yeah. It can be in movies, it can be in commercials, you know, it's, it's, or it's tough. sporting. Yeah, you know, I mean, I have, there's different ones for different reasons. You know, meeting Dr. J, he was my favorite growing up. I mean, I love Julius. I lived 45 minutes from the Philadelphia Spectrum. Um, doing a commercial with Yogi, that was incredible. Uh, I had a chance, it's actually on YouTube, you can see it, four years ago. Uh, I did a half court thing with Rocky the mascot. I hit a half court hook shot during a timeout. You know, that was that was definitely a highlight in front of sixteen thousand people. That was great. Last year I did a wrestling thing. I'm a big WWF guy, WWE now, and uh, I did the Randy Macho Man Savage leap off the tur- off the corner turnbuckle onto a guy. I wanted to do that since I was ten years old. Oh my gosh. I'm much older now, so, you know. And, uh, you know, I did it with Jerry the King Lawler, and this other guy, Stan Sierra, was the guy. Well, he was the heel who I jumped on. You know, the different highlights in life, you know. I mean, I've, I've, I've met people, yes, meeting Charlton Heston, Muhammad Ali. You know, I've been friends with Barry Bonds for 32 years already. Uh, no, 31 years now. Um, you know, uh, Shaquille O'Neal's a friend. I mean, so many guys that I've met along the, the way and along this journey. And, and like I said, you know, I have just had a blast. You know, Richard Pryor, Jackie Gleason, Robert Klein, Lonzo Minnelli, you know, just they're, they're, 
no reason why 